Hello everyone and welcome back to this 2021 November challenge. In case this is your first video or you haven't watched the previous video devoted to this challenge, I will just let you know that during the whole month of November, I will be talking exclusively about film noir, reviewing or discussing some of its most prominent examples in my opinion. So thank you so much for joining me today in talking about one of the movies, one of the pièces de résistance that I was dying to talk about this November and it is none other than the film Night in the City released in 1950 and directed by Jules Dassin. Night and the City, an intimate and intense picture of a city and the intruders in the night who live and love and hate under cover of its darkness. Richard Widmark, always fleeing from one affair, always turning to another, working harder than any man that ever lived but always on the wrong thing. I discovered Night and the City actually last year. This is something that I documented in a video dedicated to Richard Widmark. But ever since I first saw Night and the City again, I was just wanting to film a video about it. But I thought that this was the proper occasion to do so. This is a film that for many reasons, I believe it is one of the best examples of precisely Richard Widmark's work in film noir. And it's not like we don't have many examples really. This is perhaps also one of his most iconic roles in film noir, of course with the exception of the one he played in Kiss of Death. With precisely Kiss of Death in 1947, creating one of the most remembered laughs and psychos in film noir really and in movies. Richard Widmark appeared in a couple of movies that definitely played along the realms of his Tommy Udo in The Kiss of Death, such as Street With No Name and Roadhouse both released in 1948. But as Richard Widmark grew in popularity and as much as audiences loved watching him in this psycho, giddy, insane characters, he was desperate to play the hero as he was feeling he was being pretty much pigeonholed. Thus progressively, even though it would take him a few years, he started getting more and more sympathetic parts, even if they still dwelt this sordid and city environments. And this is exactly what we find in a movie like Night and the City. This is without a doubt Richard Widmark's film. So if you enjoyed Tyrone Power in Nightmare Alley, you will definitely love Richard Widmark in Night in the City. Furthermore, there are similarities between the character that Tyrone Power plays in Nightmare Alley and Richard Widmark's in Night in the City, in the sense that both characters are perfect examples of the doomed protagonist. The sense of fatalism also that is lurking is perhaps all the more intense in Night in the City. He plays a two-time hustler in this movie with no morals, someone with big epic grander delusions that quite inevitably end up in failure. He spends most of the movie running away from his own wrongdoings. But as I was just saying, Richard Widmar has a way to play it that makes you connect with him and empathize with him. The rest of the cast, I have to say, is also equally impressive, with the exception of actors Hugh Marlowe and Jean Tierney. The rest are a combination of British and European actors. Quite a bizarre array of characters, but that really play with the grotesque and sordid atmosphere that the movie has. There are several discoveries for me from actors that I think offer tremendous performances as well. To name some of the most prominent, in my opinion, I have to start by mentioning the actor who plays the Greco-Roman boxer called Gregorius in the movie. Movie, played by Polish actor Stanislaus Zipsko. And as I have heard in a Jules Dassin interview that I believe is included in the Criterion Collection edition of Night and the City, he explains that he personally chose Stanislaus to play the part of Gregorius. He was indeed a professional wrestler, as we see in the movie, and had a general appearance and certain instinctive skills when he acted that really convinced Jules Dassin that he was the best option over professional actors in this case. I also have to mention, which is something that I'll go deeper in a few minutes when I talk about Jules Dassin, but the cast of this 
movie, particularly the British actors of this movie, was done by none other than Douglas Fairbanks Jr., who at the time was more focused on being a producer, being a notorious Anglophile. He had participated in productions in England. He would help then in this movie by choosing the British actors that would play bit parts and supporting roles in Night in the City. And I have to say the job he did was amazing. I was unfamiliar, I have to say, with most of the supporting actors in this film and particularly the performances of actors like Francis L. Sullivan or Guji Withers are particularly impressive in my opinion. We also have in the movie actors that I already knew like Mike Mazursky or Herbert Lum. Jean Tierney's casting was also particularly special in this film because it was something that came from 20th Century Fox studio chief Daryl Zanuck who insisted Jules Dassin on casting Jean Tierney for the movie because she was in a bad place and having work at this particular juncture of her life was of the utmost importance. She is also always a welcome presence in any movie but particularly in film noir is one of the genres movement or styles in which we got to see some of her best performances. There are several factors that make this movie that make Night in the City a very compelling film beyond what we see on screen which is quite enthralling and fantastic but if we take a look at its production the context when it was made and how it got to be made in the first place it is quite another story to say the least primarily the movie is set and was shot on location in London. What happened in this case was that its director, Jules Dassin, who had impressed with former movies such as Brute Force, The Naked City, and Thieves Highway, was on the verge of being blacklisted for former affiliation to the Communist Party. Even the video dedicated to Nightmare Alley, I was mentioning Daryl Zanuck not backing the movie enough. In this case, I have to say that the effort he put in making this movie possible is truly worth mentioning because as I was saying at the idea that Jules Dassin was going to be effectively blacklisted and therefore not being able to make a movie in Hollywood, Daryl Zanuck passed him the book upon which the movie is based and convinced Jules Dassin to take on this project as soon as possible and to start shooting immediately, especially the most expensive scenes so that the studio 20th Century Fox couldn't back down on the movie sending him also to London and a way to help Jules Dassin make what they considered his last movie in Hollywood. Jules Dassin moved to France in 1953 but it would take him quite a few years to be able to make another film and the next film he was able to make and release in 1955 was none other than Rififi, a French heist film highly acclaimed I should say that got him international exposure and respect. He went on to marry Greek actress, activist and politician Melina Mercuri and they did several projects together. The most famous perhaps is Top Capi released in 1964 making Jules Dassin again still today a highly highly acclaimed director. Talking about the script for the movie and the book upon which is based written in this case by Gerald Kirsch as I was saying before, the making of Night in the City was quite hasty due to the circumstances and something that is also important and mentioned by Jules Dassin is that he didn't in fact have the time to read the novel before he made the movie and therefore the script is really different from the original novel. It is indeed, I believe, a book that was also quite difficult to translate into a film and in this case the screenwriter responsible for the adaptation was Joe I singer. The script was also pretty much prompted by Daryl Zanuck and again there were many concessions made to try to make the story really thrilling and fast-paced. In that regard I also have to mention that there was another version of the story released in 1992 and starring Robert De Niro and Jessica Lange. I haven't watched the film but what I have read is that it's pretty much based on Jules Dassin film. Aside from the rhythm the film has and the cinematography and the fatalism prevailing. What is most interesting about Night in the City, in my opinion, is seeing that journey that Harry Fabian goes through into what it feels like almost a trip 
to hell. It is a fatalism that gives off the impression of being a very ancestral fatalism, like something you could read out of a Greek tragedy. And truly, Richard Widmark's character almost feels like he has done some sort of pact with the devil. He is again truly fantastic in a movie that as I was just mentioning was really difficult to make in the first place. In my case it took me a long time to discover but I'm so glad I did and particularly as I said in the video dedicated to Richard Widmark, I am so happy that I've come to realize how brilliant an actor he was. So this November if you can do yourself a favor and track down 1950s Jules Dassin Night in the City. All right so that was all for today's video. Thank you so much again for joining me today. Thank you so much for your support and for your love of classic movies and see you all in my next video. Bye!